From Bahrain, it's a half-hour flight aboard a US Navy helicopter to reach the exercise area. Our first stop is the USS Lewis B. Puller, a converted tanker the American military now uses as an amphibious staging base, the only one of its kind in the US Navy. Although not quite the size of an aircraft carrier, she has a vast landing deck able to handle a steady flow of Navy aircraft. She's here in the Gulf for Artemis Trident, a three-nation maritime exercise aimed at honing a key naval skill, mine hunting. The fact Artemis Trident is taking place here in the Gulf is of course no accident. This is one of the busiest shipping lanes in the entire world. The Straits of Hormuz, a very strategic choke point here in the Gulf, are very close by. And this is one of the major thoroughfares for the world's supply of oil and gas. A short hop away are two UK ships involved in this exercise. The Royal Fleet Auxiliary landing ship Cardigan Bay and the small mine hunter HMS Lebri. A veteran of both Gulf Wars and at the grand old age of 38, the oldest vessel in the Royal Navy. And this is what they've come to practice finding, sea mines. Various types and sizes, but each one, if they were real, able to do serious harm to the ships that use this vital waterway. These mimic what, we try, what we're trying to hunt. Uh, the first one here is a, um, a Mark 14, uh, the blue one, uh, based on a, a UK mine. Uh, the second, uh, the green one, that's um, uh, it's, it's a fake Manta, they call it. It's an Italian mine. Both, both designed to sit on the, the bottom of the seabed uh, and then they're, they're listening out for ships in terms of uh, the noise and, and the magnetic signature a ship goes over the top of them and then they're, they're designed to, um, uh, to detonate. So the equipment that we've got here is CDLSC, which stands for Clearance Diver Life Support Equipment. Um, we dive this to a depth of 60 metres and we dive it using a variation of gases. Um, but it's basically an enriched breathing system. So what this does is pass, um, uh, we rebreathe our own air and it just supplements. What this does is allow us to stay at a greater depth for a longer period of time. The Royal Navy have a number of autonomous underwater vehicles or UUVs here, among them the Sea Fox and this Remus 100, which can dive to a depth of 100 metres in search of mines on the seabed. We are continuing to embrace emerging maritime technology, uh, so not only do we dive against ordnance, but we've got remotely controlled underwater vehicles that we can, that we can use. Uh, so they, they give us a picture of what's underneath the water, they've got their own sonars, they've got their own cameras, and we're also uh, embracing the unmanned systems. So we've got unmanned surface vehicles that tow sonars. So again, it's, it's giving us a greater standoff distance, keeping people out of harm's way. On the deck of the Cardigan Bay is another rather unique unmanned mine hunter, a rigid inflatable boat that can hunt down objects in the water while its operator sits in the relative safety of a control room. A variety of arrays on here, uh, forward and aft looking uh, fixed cameras, as you see here, uh, dual GPS antennas, uh, of course, uh, some VHF radios, uh, uh, um, the uh, EO ball here, which is a uh, can spin around autonomously. We can spin around and look all over the place. Uh, it can see at night as well. Uh, a radar and, of course, uh, the high and low band antennas, which is what we use to communicate with the boat uh, remotely. Uh, it's controlled with uh, manned at beginning of the launch uh, by uh, this console here, which is a stick uh, to jet propulsion boat, so it's, it doesn't use a rudder or screws. And that's used to uh, get it out on the, the water and get it in position. And then the crew will do work a series of uh, switches down here in order to convert over to an unmanned system. The French Navy has its mine hunter Legler here. On board are teams of divers trained in finding underwater mines and its own unmanned mine detector. This one is a computer of uh, sonar picture we can have with the UUV just behind. On this screen you can see both sonar picture on the side of the sonar and in the middle a blank. Each thing on the seabed can be classified by sonar specialists. For example, you have some uh, pipe there or some uh, fishing net marks in the sand. Each day 17 million barrels of oil pass through the Straits of Hormuz. On the opposing coast is Iran, which has previously threatened to mine this stretch of water during tensions over its nuclear programme. It's important that we uh, continue to do what we do. It is a defensive exercise. Um, the, the mine threat is, is always present. I, you can never know who the malign actors are in this region. 
Um, so what we do is we make sure that we're always ready to meet whatever dangers arise. For HMS Ledbury, it's time to get back to the exercise and leave the side of her mothership, Cardigan Bay. For the three navies involved in Artemis Trident, this has been a chance to learn from one another, to test techniques and focus on their common unseen enemy beneath the waves.